So you've heard a little bit about the school-wide enrichment model and the curriculum heart of the school-wide enrichment model is the enrichment triad model. It is one of three service delivery components that are a part of the SEM. Down the face of the cube, we have talked a little bit about total strength assessment, um, and we've talked a little bit about curriculum compacting and differentiation, and now we're going to introduce you to actually my favorite part of the, of the school-wide enrichment model, and that is the enrichment triad model. Developed by Joe Renzulli in 1977, there are three types of enrichment associated with the enrichment triad model. Type one enrichment, which is general exploratory activities. Type two enrichment, which is group training activities. And type three, or individual and small group investigations of real problems. Um, that is the most advanced part of the uh, enrichment triad model. Now, type one and type two activities are good for all children. We think all children should be exposed to new ideas. Um, we think all children should be able to go on field trips, real field trips, should be able to have opportunities for virtual field trips. Uh, type ones can be books, can be online activities, can be speakers, can be DVDs and movies. Uh, type one can be exposure to competitions, to new ideas, to the regular curriculum. You can have a type one that's brought to you as part of the regular curriculum, or you can have a type one that comes in from outside the regular curriculum, from something a student reads or hears about. And you'll see a, a number of examples of this. So in, in a lot of ways, uh, type one enrichment can lead you to type two, or type two can be completely independent. So on the PowerPoint slide, you'll see some examples of type two enrichment. Some type two can be planned in advance, such as cognitive training, critical thinking, creative thinking, um, affective skill development, uh, for example, um, studying bi biographies of famous people and learning their personality characteristics, learning how to learn skills, listening, communicating, writing, analyzing. Um, some of these can also be planned in advance. Most SEM schools have some type two training for all students, and then some that might be a little bit more advanced, such as this, using advanced research skills uh, and reference skills for our more academically talented students. But again, some of type two enrichment is good for all children. Um, we also have in type two written oral and communication skills. And the most recently added part of type two deals with the kind of cognitive technology skills, uh, metacognitive skills, understanding what's real and not real on the internet, understanding um, what's viable, understanding how we can look for sources and, and uh, authenticate them, and really um, uh, uh, understanding how to do research using the internet. So these are the, the general overview of type two enrichment, but there's another kind of type two enrichment that I'll also talk about. Um, which is much more methodological training in type two. So again, here's a set of sample type two activities, creativity training, critical thinking, research skills, teaching students how to do projects and online activities, creativity training, creative problem solving, and the type of type two training you can't plan in advance that's when, what happens when a student gets interested in something, and that's methods training. Training in how to be a practicing professional, how to do something advanced, whether it be oral history or uh, archeology span or writing family histories. Um, and that, of course, leads to the third part of the enrichment triad model. And the third part of the enrichment triad model is the most advanced part and the part that's usually targeted for those high potential advanced students that you work with. In this particular case, we see um, type two training, type three training, excuse me, uh, individual and small group investigations being interest-based studies, projects that you do online, independent studies, small group studies, um, use, utilizing research skills, um, coming off of competitions and contests, 
And so what I'm going to do now is give you a, a run through of all three types of enrichment in the enrichment triad model. And again, some of the skills and some of the training, some of the enrichment opportunities in the triad model are good for all students. So here's an example of a type one. Um, this was a local historian who came to a school district to give a talk about local historical mysteries. He spoke to about 40 students and you notice that the four young girls standing in back of him are students who were extremely interested and extremely engaged. We didn't need any kind of instrument to let us know which students might want to go further. So the 30 or 40 students that heard this speech all benefited from hearing it, but then these four students actually became much more engaged, much more motivated, and two of those young students um, actually completed a type three. So we go from about 40 students that heard the type one to four students that got involved in some advanced type two training to two students who completed a type three in local history. Here's another example of a type one. This is a, uh, a person from a local bank talking about economics, the history of money. And again, in this particular group, only one student out of the 40 students that heard the type one wanted to go on and do something advanced. Here you see a type one, and I wanna point out that we, we work very hard to have these be balanced by gender. We have a woman here, or female engineer, woman engineer presenting on robotics. All students that were interested in this got to experience and understand a little bit of robotics, and only a couple of students, and I think she spoke to a couple of hundred students in various classrooms. Everybody was energized and excited about the type one, but not all students wanted to complete advanced training or a type three in robotics. So type ones can also be interest centers. This is a simple interest center on inventors and inventions with some how-to books down below and some task cards. And here's a, a slightly different interest center. And here you see uh, a number of different task cards, posters, and uh, opportunities for students to delve into areas more closely. Um, we have books, we have uh, exciting uh, displays, and all of this goes into the development of interests and the development of a robust type one delivery center that can be used again for all students. The next uh, very important point I'd like to make about type one is that every type one should have some kind of debriefing from a teacher. We should ask students, what did you find interesting about the presentation? Did this raise questions? Are there careers that this made you consider? Would anyone that you know would li like to work on this more? Or would you like to have more contact? Would you like to explore a career? Do you have an idea for a project? When you do a debriefing, what can end up happening is you identify students who are really interested in the topic. So. Um, the next slide is a perfect example of that. We see uh, a group of students who attended a type one on storytelling with 200 of their classmates in grades uh, one through three. And then of that group, five students were interested enough to do some follow-up on type two training, advanced methodological follow-up in storytelling. So the enrichment triad model can provide some enrichment for all students, exposing them to new topics, new ideas, um, providing them with, with a, 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 a number of different ways that they can explore various interests, learn things that are extensions of the regular curriculum or things that they um, didn't ever know anything about outside of the regular curriculum. And then of course also provide them with advanced training in areas of interest. Um, type three enrichment is the most advanced part of the enrichment triad model. And this is what Joe Renzulli defines as a child thinking, feeling, and doing like a practicing professional. This is a type three completed by a student in an SEM program that won the Connecticut State Science Fair. And it was about the photographing the spectra of the stars, the color of various stars. And the student worked on this for six months. Type threes are often always characterized by intense interest on a student's part. And we like to talk about type threes 
as students pursuing problems that are real to them or interests that are real to them. And there are four things that make a, four characteristics that make a type three a real problem. One is that the students have a personal interest in it. Two, that they use authentic methods. Three, that there's no existing solution or right answer. That is, that there's not one right answer. It's not a, it's a, it's a, a much more broadened picture of, of what students should be exploring. And four, that it's designed to have an impact on an audience other than a teacher or even a classroom. How do type threes emerge? Well, we love this diagram. Think of it as throwing pebbles into a pond. We build around the interests of a child. We build that by interviewing the student, by beginning to work on a management plan, um, which will be included in our SEM toolkit for you to adapt, use, modify. With the management plan, we like to think a little bit about the resources, the how-to, the methodologies for students. We try to think early on about audiences and feedback and uh, giving them time to polish their work and revise and make it even better. And of course, we always think about finding appropriate outlets and audiences, somebody other than just your teacher. A real audience always makes students do better in their work. And I think that this is, of course, why we have the management plan, and this is why we, we move in this direction. So let me give you an example of a type three done by a student named Brooks. Uh, who is in an SEM program. He was a fifth grader. Recently, he said he was watching a television show with his mother about Sam. And so the type one in this case was actually a television show. Sam is a young boy about Brooks' age who had progeria. Uh, he heard, Brooks said, that Sam say he always had wanted to ride on a roller coaster, but couldn't because of his disease, which is a rare, fatal, congenital, unfortunately, gen genetic condition characterized by the appearance of rapid aging. Brooks said that he wondered about whether he could give Sam this experience of a, of a roller coaster ride. So think a little bit about this young boy um, who began to work on a project that took him several months. He had the above average ability. He had the task commitment and the creativity to stick with something that took him months. And think about what Joe mentioned in Operation Houndstooth, the sensitivity, the understanding, the, the determination to follow through, and wanting to make the world a better place for Sam. So Brooks actually started studying, and think about the enrichment triad model, type twos, and how to build roller coasters, how to design roller coasters, how roller coasters worked. He worked on this for months and months. He got a vibrata vibration chair. He went on roller coasters and videotaped the, from the front of the roller coaster what it felt like. He designed and worked on this for months and months and months and actually ended up, uh, again, designing a prototype of a roller coaster chair that people that had physical disabilities that couldn't sit in a real roller coaster could experience what it felt like to be on a roller coaster. This is a perfect example of a type three in action and this is Brooks, again, a fifth grader from an SEM program in Connecticut. His type three made a difference for people like, like the Sam, the young person with progeria who unfortunately did pass away, but other people like Sam. Brooks also wrote to roller coasters to companies, to people who manufactured them, to see if they had an interest in having chairs like this at various places and various amusement parks. Another example, this is Kylie. Kylie got interested in ladybugs because of a lesson taught by her regular classroom teacher. And so she wanted to learn more about ladybugs. She spent months and months researching ladybugs and developing a board game. The te her teacher found books for her in board game design, and rules, and how to do this, and also how to start and run a business because she wanted to actually produce a game that could be marketed. And Kylie was able to produce her game called the Ladybug Game. You might have seen it, you might actually have it in your home. And this was done as a type three, as a part of a school-wide enrichment model program. And so the enrichment triad model has many opportunities for type ones from 
uh, students that, again, all students in a school, students at, at, at various kinds of, um, of uh, seminars, various kinds of, of opportunities for them as a whole school, as a grade level to be exposed to new ideas, type ones, type two to learn how to problem solve, how to be a critical and creative thinker, and then of course type threes to be able to, to take ideas and develop them into long-term pro projects that challenge and engage them and oftentimes become the things they want to do later on in their life. Um, we have lots of research conducted on the enrichment triad model. We know that it works well for students who are uh, in gifted programs, students who are in enrichment programs. It's used as a, a magnet theme. It's used as a charter school theme. It's used with students uh, who have special needs, who have learning disabilities, who are twice exceptional. And the school-wide enrichment model and, and enrichment triad model is really the heart and, uh, of learning and instruction and the SEM model. So we hope this brief overview of the enrichment triad model will give you some ideas about how you can implement this in your school. And of course, we'll be talking about this a little bit more when we discuss enrichment clusters. <music>